Right, we're just going to have a look at the uh, the PC2400 and the Mini Pro, uh, along with the HDMI adapter. Uh, as I mentioned on the, another video, this adapter, whilst fit, fitting perfectly into GQ4X, like that, um, it does not fit into this one without small modification. And I'll just show you what that is. You will need to remove top four, sorry, top three pins on the adapter. That's all. I'll just show you the brand new one. Yeah, you see there. Focus. These little header pins. There's one of them has fallen out on this or has come out during the soldering process because uh, oh, actually maybe it's just been removed deliberately uh, but you can see let me focus that again yeah that far side there's one already missing you basically need to snip out those two and three of this side and that will leave you uh, with one that looks like that hopefully so now you can place those four pins to the top of the Mini Pro and then just lock it in place and uh, and that's it. I'll just show you that working now. I'll just plug it in and connect it to the US, uh, to the computer. That's it, it's recognised. We'll just run the Mini Pro program. I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit so you can see what's going on. Right, now I have already connected up an HDMI cable to a small Grundig Elegance LCD set and I've also plugged a separate cable into the VGA um, port as well uh, and that is a VGA to HDMI lead on eBay, no problems. The other one is just the standard HDMI to HDMI cable. So all you would need to do is select 24CO2 from the devices available. In this case I've selected Atmel, so it just is an 8024CO2. Hit select and plug the cable in. In this case it's a stiff cable and got to be careful this doesn't pull that uh, socket out with the ZIF, the ZIF socket. There we are, that's in there. Just going to lower that down. You then click on read and then click on read again. And that's it, read successful. Just cancel that and you can see that the data has been filled in on the, on the screen. And you can go off and uh, save that to your desktop or uh, a folder just for your EEPROM dumps. And the same again with the VGA. In fact, I don't know which way around these are. I can't see the back of the set, but the, uh, you use the same chip. Put that back in. Now, unfortunately, I'm using really thick, heavy cables and it's cold out here, which isn't helping. I'm just going to pop that in there and do a read. Click on read and that's it. Click on cancel and you can see the data has been filled in there and that's ready to be saved. Um, so get rid of that. So that's it. If you uh, if you want to, if you have one of these or you want one of these, you will just need to remove the three pins at the top and uh, you can carry on using it. Just bear in mind that uh, you don't have quite so much stability and just be careful that the cable doesn't pull this out of the, uh, the ZIF socket. So that's it. Um, Oh, the only thing I would say is you do need to remember that the TV or whatever you're working on must be in standby. Um, although this programmer and the GQ4X and others are able to supply power to the set for reading an IC, 
the actual adapter is not connected to allow that to happen. So the set must be in standby. And uh, just select the 24 CO2 uh, IC from the, uh, the programmer's devices list. And uh, that'll be it. It'd be great if more people could do this because we've built up quite a nice collection on the forum. We already have quite a few HDMI, VGA and uh, normal memory dumps on the forum. But it'd be great to build up a, a few more. So yeah, that's it. I've just got four more of these into stock uh, yesterday, so if anybody wants one of these they can buy them on the forum or the eprom-programmers.co.uk website. Um, so, yeah, catch you later.